Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be playing Rule the Waves again. I think this is part 7 of our Let's Play of the series, and in it we're playing as Japan. Uh, the game takes a look at the naval arms races which took place between 1900 and 1925. Getting you up to speed with where we've been, in the last video we took over Angola from the Portuguese, although they're not really represented in the game. Neutral colonies are just represented by a kind of gray square, and random events can allow different countries to take those regions over. So Japan has become a colonial empire by taking over Angola. Uh, we've stationed, what have we stationed, a handful of cruisers out there. Um, it's a small base, doesn't have much in the way of resources, um, but if we take a look at the Western African area, we have two light cruisers and three destroyers based out of there. That's about the most we can base there. Meanwhile, back home, we still have Formosa, which we took from the Chinese in the 1895 war. Not that we played that in this game, but that's how we got it. And then we have South Korea as well. North Korea is a neutral nation. Port Arthur is also a neutral nation. Um, and then there are two other colonies in northern um, Asia, uh, the Chung Tsung Tao base or the Katsau Bay, which is the German colony there, and then Wee Wai, which is the British base there. In addition to that, Russia has some uh, mainland territories in the Sakhalin Islands, and then also uh, Katamaka, and then also kind of the Vladivostok area. Well, I guess that would be Vladivostok, um, as well as just kind of the Russian Far East. Um, the reason I mention those different uh, countries who have areas in our area is uh, we have seen, and that was really brilliant, um, articulately spoken, genius statements there, area within our area. Um, we've been seeing the tensions rise here over on the right side of the screen uh, over the last couple of turns, last couple of years, and we've seen tensions with Russia rise up to a 9 and Germany to an 8. So we're really in that danger zone with both those countries where we could be seeing a war break out before much longer. Now if we take a look at the power structure right now, both Germany, who has 14 battleships to R7, and Russia, who has 16 to R7, heavily outclass us in terms of battleships. Uh, Germany's actually building five, so they're going to outstrip us even more. Uh, Russia, on the other hand, has 16, but they're only building one. Uh, so at least in that sense, we are going to be gaining ground with the four we have under construction now. Although they're new, all newly under construction, uh, they're all uh, the Mikasa rebuilt design of 1904, uh, but they'll all be constructed still almost two full years from now. Two to three years from now is when those ships will be coming off the line. Um, so that does mean that uh, we are at some risk of the Russians, um, you know, if they go to war now. In addition to that, if we take a look at the map here, we can see, uh, as one user suggested, uh, he believed that uh, the tensions uh, throughout the world influence who bases ships where, and that does seem to be the case, as Russia has based 13 battleships in, north in their bases in northeastern Asia, so they outnumber us nearly 2 to 1. They only have one battleship in home waters, according to our intelligence. Uh, meanwhile, the Germans, despite us having raised tensions, only have a handful of cruisers out east, uh, nothing actually in northeastern Asia. Asia, three heavy cruisers in southeastern Asia, um, and it looks like uh, a handful of cruisers in the Indian Ocean and the Western Pacific or Western Atlantic area, West Africa area. So Germany uh, may outnumber us by a uh, substantial number as well, uh, but they haven't been deploying ships to the Far East. So it looks like Russia is the real risk. They outnumber us nearly two to one in terms of uh, warships that are. Um, deployed to our, our region. So that's a little bit concerning if we end up going to war with them, because the Russians would have a serious problem reinforcing ships there, but the fact that they have 13 battleships here already uh, is, a, is a pretty substantial concern. Now right now we've got about a two million dollar monthly budget surplus as we enter 1905, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, try and get some specialization because right now Russia just has so much more in terms of ships than us so what I'm actually going to do all of our crews if we actually take a look at our ships all of our crews for the most part are trained pretty darn well we've got a few that are even trained to elite status which means they've been in the ships been active for a long time so they're very high quality uh, crews uh, but we're gonna try and give ourselves an advantage over the Russians uh, even more so than what we might have now or might not actually so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna train our crews in gunnery we're also going to train them in night fighting. So we're going to increase our uh, maintenance cost by 50% by doing that. You'll see that'll increase us to 2.1 million in terms of uh, costs. 
uh, but we can pick two specialties. So we're going to go ahead and apply both of those. And um, they take 12 months to take effect. So it's going to take a year before these specializations uh, take effect. Uh, but again, we've got gunnery and night fighting. Uh, both are going to be specializations, and it's going to increase our training cost by $2 million. Um, you can see, I don't see a budget hit yet. Huh. Unless it was $2 million per year, which would only come out to... No, it would still be, be a couple hundred thousand. Maybe it did take a hit. I should have looked at the budget again. Um, anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll end the first turn. And uh, we're receiving much praise for building the requested number of battleships. Good. Um, so that should help our budget. The Prime Minister's return from a state visit to Russia, bringing home a proposal to solve outstanding sources of tension between our nations. What's your response when asked for advice? We can trust. We can never trust Russia. It'll increase tensions, but it'll also give us more budget. We should take the opportunity to promote better understanding between our nations. Well, I'm really... Let's see, what if we do this? Okay, so tensions with Russia are even risk are even higher right now. Um, you can see we are going to get a bigger budget now. You see our budget did take that training hit, but because of our recent statement, we're getting a bigger naval budget because of that, so about $1.4 in addition. Um, but you can see uh, relations with Russia took a, a turn for the worse. Um, still, it's going to take a year before any of those training specializations do kick in, so we want to make sure that we... Um, don't initiate a war before 1906, I would say. With this additional money, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rebuild uh, the SMA class uh, heavy cruiser. In the last video, I made a critical mistake in that I actually deleted the redesigned version of the ship. And um, that was pretty stupid on my part because the redesign, uh, really deleting that made it a useless ship. So I had to scrap two of my heavy cruisers because I simply didn't, uh, didn't have a design. They were basically empty hulks. Um, so yeah, it was dumb. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and we're going to replace the machinery on the uh, Asima class, which will, you see, give us 110 tons of extra space that we can use. And what we'll do with that is we'll go ahead and um, I'm thinking we're going to put these secondary guns to make them more effective. We'll put them in turrets instead of casemates. I think that'll make them more effective. Um, so if we go ahead and we put them in a single turret each, you can see this, we still have 65 tons. Um, what if we put them in double turrets? Interesting. Can we do that, though? Rebuilding ship, you can install secondary guns of 6-inch caliber, but only in single mounts. Lame. Okay. So if we put them in single mounts, let's see if that makes it a legal redesign. Still gives us 65 tons. Um, now, we is without, has less torpedo protection than available technology allows. Uh, the ship will be ordered from a foreign yard, but could be built in a local yard. So we're going to change the building yard to local. And bulged, if we do that, does it give us any penalty? Less torpedo protection than it allows. I don't know if that. I don't know if we can adjust torpedo, but I think we can add an anti-torpedo bulge. Hmm. And then maybe we'll add five additional rounds. We could add two secondaries. No, that'd be too heavy. I was gonna say two more secondaries would be nice. What if we bump the speed up? E. Can't really bump the speed up unless we bring the armor down. We could do that, drop five rounds, and there we go. So we increase the speed by a knot, shift the secondary guns into single turrets, and we did bring the turret armor down by a half a percent. And we also added a bulged torpedo defense, although I'm not sure if that really did anything because I don't have any torpedo defense here. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and save that redesign. We'll, redes we'll name that redesign 1905. Well, I guess it'll automatically name it 1905. So rebuild design 1905. Do you want to go to the rebuild dialog? Yes. 
Monthly build cost will be 1.9 million, but it'll only take eight months. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we've got one of our ships now being rebuilt in a local yard. So the Asima class modernized and maybe we'll even build some new ones of that because that's a pretty darn good uh, new class or new redesign of a, of a pretty solid class and the additional knot is going to be kind of nice to have. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and jump ahead to the next turn. Russia sent an ultimatum. Unless we back down, there will likely be war. What course of action do you recommend? I would say we're not ready for war right now. It'll hurt our prestige, but it will drop tensions a little bit. So I am not ready to go to war right now. Russia's just too strong, and they've got too many ships in the Far East. And our training for our night fighting and gunnery aren't complete yet, um, so I'd really like to uh, wait a little bit before we go to war with them. But we do get additional money. Our budget does increase a bit. Uh, so again, that's going to be a nice factor in helping us catch up. In fact, you can see the naval budget is up to $237 million. When you compare that, we've got a bigger naval budget than Italy. We're not that far behind Russia or France, and both of them have uh, colonies and uh, territories elsewhere that they need to defend, like in mainland Europe, um, although we are substantially behind still Germany and Great Britain, as to be expected. Okay. So we'll go ahead and jump ahead another turn. Oh, AI build ship procedure, Great Britain. Okay, so there's some kind of error with a ship that the British are building. I wonder if it has to do, maybe they're violating the arms treaty and the game's kind of scolding them for that? I don't know. Okay, so we got one of those cruisers completed. The other had some problem with machinery, but we just got that completed. There's been an international upheaval in Libya. Great Britain is apparently sending a force there to restore order, but it's likely to have more reaching plans. What do you recommend? Uh, issue an ultimatum? No, we're not going to issue an ultimatum to Great Britain. They're too strong. Push for international force. It'll increase tension slightly. Not risk raising tensions. We'll do that. We don't really care about Libya. So Great Britain just took over Libya. Um, and we can go ahead and take a look here. They took over Libya, but it really doesn't affect Japan in the Far East, so I really don't care. Um, meanwhile, tensions remained. And some more of our ships, which are under construction, are completed. So now we actually have $2.7 million um, in spare cash sitting around. Uh, that's enough, basically, to start construction on two more battleships. But I think what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go back to the rebuild. I'm going to kind of rebuild... Um, whoops, don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild some more of my heavy cruisers. with the 1905 rebuild. Again, it's more expensive because we're doing it domestically, but I'd rather do that than uh, um, rely on foreign yards. We'll rebuild both of these. So we're going to have three heavy cruisers in dock for uh, rebuilds, as well as four battleships being constructed. Um, need to make sure we don't go to war in the next eight months or so. Our maneuvers has opened fire at a fishing boat from the U.S., sinking the boat, killing several fishermen. Uh, we can take a prestige hit and apologize, or we can say that they shouldn't have been in the area. Well, our tensions with the U.S. are pretty low, so we'll just do that rather than take the prestige hit. And we just had a breakthrough, so we can now have three centerline main turrets on our ships. Um, so that's going to kind of start the whole Dreadnought race. That's kind of cool. And a whole bunch of breakthroughs there. Let's take a look at the Almanac here. It doesn't look like anyone's building anything that's considered a Dreadnought yet, but I wonder if we can design one now um, that we have the technology for three centerline turrets. So let's go up here. Let's set it to BB. I don't know if, like, um, well, one sec. And we're going to uh, auto-design ship. So it does look like we can do that. We actually are allowed to build a ship that's up to 10% above the design limitations of the treaty that we signed. So we could build a 16,000 ton battleship. It would have a top speed of 18 knots. This is all computer generated at the moment. Um, and it would have six main guns of, a, well, 11 inch caliber I think would violate the treaty. Design's not legal. Ship exceeds treaty limitations. Well, and we can't build a 16,100-ton ship, so we'd have to drop that by 100 tons, which is fine. 
Uh, but then we have to drop the main caliber. Let's see if it's legal now. Ship identified as BB. Okay. So we could build a ship with six. I wonder if we can do a super. I don't think we have super firing turret ability yet. So basically, this would be like the Brandenburg class of battleships that the Germans built historically, where they had two main front and aft heavy turrets, and then they had a turret in the middle of the ship between the stacks that could fire to either side. Um, although in the German case, it had a shorter barrel and a lower caliber gun. It was the Brandenburg class um, because it needed a shorter barrel to fit between the turrets. I don't believe that's going to affect us in this particular design. Um, but as you can see here, we could build a 16,000 ton battleship um, with 10 inch belt armor, which seems adequate. Um, nine inch main guns, which the reason I, I would drop it down to nine actually is because our nine inch guns are actually superior to our 10 inch guns in terms of their armor penetration. If we look at this, you can see at 5,000 meters, they can penetrate 5.8 inches of side armor. At 8,000, they can penetrate 4.7. If we actually bump them up to 10 inch guns, um, we can see they can only penetrate 4.3 at 8,000 meters and 5.3 at 5,000. So our, our 9 inch gun is actually superior to our 10 inch gun due to the lack of quality that we have. So we go ahead and we increase it, oops, not 11. We go ahead and we increase or lower it down to 9 inches just because that particular um, option is better for us. And it actually saves us weight as well. A, a pretty substantial amount of weight, over 300 tons on the turrets, um, which means we've got over a thousand tons of space here. Um, I think what we'd do is, well, we'd, ideally we want to put them in turrets, our secondary, well that's a lot of turrets. Uh, maybe we put them in double turrets? What if we do that? What does that say for the design? Okay, sweet. Oh, secondary guns, 40% lack of suitable training and elevation gear for secondary turrets. That's a pretty heavy um, penalty. What if we increase the weight on the guns? Do we still get a penalty? Oh my goodness! Will you build a 16,000 ton ship with six 9-inch guns in the, in the center and 18 8-inch guns along the side? This thing's a freaking tank! It might not count as a dreadnought technically, but holy cow, this thing is awesome. Um, we don't have any tertiary guns, so maybe we want to have a few of those. We can put like 10 of those in, put them in casemates, and uh, add those in. We could put more, but we don't need to. Um, maybe put 100 rounds of main, main shell ammo. Again, this is a 16,000 ton ship. Um, I would say the turret top, we probably want to increase to 3 inches. Uh, the turrets are 10 inches. Wow, that's awesome. Maybe I'll make them 4 inches. Got to make those tops hard to hit. And the secondary turrets, we bump up to 5 just because they are basically main centerline turrets. Um, goodness. Duck armor, maybe we want that at... Ooh, we can't afford that weight. 2 inches looks like the best we can do for deck armor. I don't know. I'm not sure if the armor's too light or not. What if we want to make 19 knots? It'd be a little bit heavy. But if we drop the turret top back down to 3 inches, we save some weight. And then if we... Err... We need 140 tons that we can save. We could drop some of these secondaries. Well, do we really need 18 8-inch guns as our secondaries? That's pretty crazy. What if we have 23 inch tertiary guns? But we don't even we don't even need to do that. We can just cut two. We just cut one turret. So we've got 16 8 inch guns and double turrets along the side of the ship. And then we've got six 9 inch guns along the center line of the ship. Oh my goodness. This ship rocks. We can make 19 knots. What if we wanted to bump it up to 20? We'd have to find 400 tons to save. What if we dropped. Holy cow, those are guys that gotta be like blocking the fire though. That's not a heavy cruiser? You say it's a heavy cruiser? That is not a heavy cruiser. I guess it could be. That would be a heck of a heavy cruiser. Ugh. Can we illegally make him a 9 inch gun? It still identifies as a heavy cruiser. Is that just because we don't have 18? Wait, what? How is that identified? Oh, it's too fast? It's so fast it identifies as a heavy cruiser, that's why? 
Uh, that seems odd. What if we just make it 19 notes? Yeah, okay. All right. Um, 19 knots. We don't need torpedo mounts on our battleship. I'm guessing it's just too fast. Oh, okay. They must be smaller than the main caliber. All right. So that puts us up. Well, we just might as well add the turrets back. Hmm. Okay. And I think I'll just drop the conning tower to maybe nine and a half is enough. No, it doesn't make a difference. Maybe the turrets be nine and a half. And then the conning tower nine and a half. And... Huh. Can we put torpedo protection? Oh, we can put torpedo. Just one, though. Anyway, we'll put torpedo protection on there. Um, we're going to drop the conning tower down to nine, turrets down to nine. I don't think we even need more than eight inches on the turrets, but that's fine. Um, so we have 16 secondary eight inch guns, six, nine inch main guns. And then we've got 10, three inch tertiary guns and some pretty decent armor structure, along with 19 knots, which makes it our fastest battleship to date. Um, and we'll call it the Awami class. We also have one level of torpedo protection, and I think that's good. We don't need any torpedoes on here. Oh my goodness, that's an awesome ship. We're gonna go ahead and save that. All okay. Save ship design, yep. And let's take a look here. The battleship, the Awami class, 16,000 tons displacement, breaking the rules by a little bit. Monthly build cost is 1.7 million. So that's going to put us in the red just a little bit if we do that. We've got a couple of ships that are going to be completed, but actually that prestige hit hurt our balance a bit. So it dropped us down. We'd be 2 million in the red. We'll have a ship coming offline. We're going to wait a turn before we construct it. And our max dock size just increased. Nice. Armor development, quality control, weight savings. Okay. Actually, maybe it's a good thing we didn't uh, finalize that ship here yet. Because now what we can do, I'm not sure. Let's see here. I think we can go up to 1650. Why is it illegal? Tell me what's illegal about it. Is it illegal because of that? How is it illegal? Illegal ship configuration. What does that even mean? Let's see here. The Awami we just built. Go ahead and open that up. That's not illegal. Maybe I didn't look at something. Anyway, um... So as you can see here now, we have 50 tons free because of that one inch, uh, one inch of uh, weight savings or one whatever, the additional, the new design. Um, and I'm wondering if we can boost it up to 16.5. Yeah, I think that's the max because that would be 10% over. Yep, okay. So we can make it 500 tons heavier. We can make it 16,500 tons. Six main inch or six center line main guns, sixteen secondary eight inch guns, and we have five hundred tons to work with. Now, if we bump it up to twenty knots, it'll become a cruiser. Sorry, this whole video became designing my own ship. Um, we could bump it up to twenty. No, we could have eighteen secondary in guns. Where would that where would that extra turret go? It doesn't even show up on here. But I don't really care. I don't think that's as important. I think we'll use those 500 tons for additional armor, maybe. I'm going to bump up the belt to 11 inches. Oh. We can't bring the deck up to 3. That would be too heavy. We could bring the deck up to 2.5. Maybe have the belt at 10.5. Ah. I don't know what I want to 
want to do. Cut a couple secondaries, a new design that way. So it's 19 knots top speed. Increase the belt by a half an inch. Increased deck armor by a half an inch. Um, and then drop the secondary turrets. So I like that design. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I think we're still going to need to wait another turn here until we get a little bit more cash. Okay. Our agents seem to have been captured in Great Britain. We got equal tensions with everybody, pretty much. Tensions are pretty high with everybody. So you can make him a national hero, gain some prestige, but that will increase attentions or deny involvement, which will drop tensions. I'm going to do this. Again, I don't want to go to war with Britain, but I also don't want to hurt my prestige too much. So we did increase tensions. Another round of fighting is broken out in several Balkan nations. What's our view? No doubt it's the meddling of Russia. Probably is. But that'll double increase tensions to probably start a war. We don't really give a damn about the Balkans. We're frickin' Japan. Um, we could say it's Italy. I'm going to increase our tensions with Italy. Or I'm not as scared of. They don't have the resources to come after us directly, really. Of course, we don't have a whole lot of easy resources to go after them, either. I um, wonder what they're serving for dinner at the officer mess. Um, so all this is going to increase tensions somewhat. So it's either basically increased tensions one across the board, or increased tensions with one person by two. So basically we pick Italy. And still no one's building dreadnoughts yet. Possibly because of the arms limitation treaty, I'm guessing. But I want to get some free capital before I lay down another battleship. Prime Minister's made a four policy gaffe. You're asked to smooth things over by the Naval Secretary. But never presumed to undercut the authority of the Prime Minister. Increase prestige but hurt tensions, which would probably lead to war with Italy. Agree to make bland statement to loot the effect. It'll hurt prestige. Divert an attempt by making a statement critiquing the adven adventurous foreign policy of someone else, which will boost our budget. It'll fix the budget shortfall that I'm worried about, but it'll probably put us at war. <sighs> okay. I guess I just gave back the prestige that I was going to do. Steam turbines! That's good. Steam turbines are really good. They uh, allow ships to go much faster. Um, I think I'm going to need to keep modifying this class of, this warship class, before I actually build it. Uh, only saved a few tons, but it allows us to throw some additional ammo in the, in the ship. Which I think is all I'm going to do. Okay. We still can't really afford to build it yet. Although it is dropping the build cost by a bit, by waiting. Um. Yeah, you know what? We can build it now. So let's go ahead and lay it down. The Owami class suggests it'll be the Owami. We'll build one. It's going to be 1.8 million. And here we go. First ship of the class, generate one-time cost of almost 4 million. That's fine. We've got over 16 million. And you can see here the Owami class is being laid down and built. It'll take 32 months to construct. And we now have five battleships under construction. Uh, the Russians have one under construction with 16 complete. Uh, we are actually on pace to really close the gap with Italy. Uh, Great Britain's not building any, surprisingly, but they've got 27 in service. And then Germany has five that they're constructing, but already 17 in service. Meanwhile, the heavy cruiser game, we're pretty far behind everybody, although we have three rebuilds that are about to finish. You can see that puts us big time in the red, but we've got a couple of ships that will all finish here shortly, um, which will help. Now we're going to do that. I'm not really developing submarines at all at this point. Maybe I should be. 
Anyway, that budget increase will help. And our new tr crew training. We're now proficient in our new techniques. Okay. So, I would say right about now is probably the time that we want to start considering war with Russia. They do have substantial forces in our region. 16 battleships and 11 heavy cruisers are in the Pacific. But our new training does give us an edge, I would think, in terms of the quality of our troops and our, and our sailors. And we can go ahead and we could maybe launch a surprise torpedo attack um, against them. I'm not sure. I'm thinking now might also be a good time to have a new ship design for our destroyers. We get 29 knots. I have a decent amount of torpedoes. Looks like a pretty solid design. Heavier crowded may limit the effect of range of fire. I don't really care. I don't really know if that's any different than the ones we had before. Maybe we should just rebuild the destroyers we've already got. What if we rebuild this class? We can place replace machinery, which will save us some weight. But I don't really know what benefit that would give us. I guess we could maybe increase the speed. No, we can't even do that. We could turn it into cramp. No, you can't. I don't know. I don't feel like we've made a ton of advances in terms of destroyers, but we probably should build more of those 19, uh, 1904 designs. Just have a lot of money that's tied up in ships right now. Anyway, it's January 1906. I think we're about ready to go to war with uh, Russia. We could go to war with Italy, but Russia's going to be a real challenge with their massive fleet. Uh, we just laid down a super awesome ship in the Awami. I'm really pleased with the way that thing turned out. That is just an absolute demon of a ship. Eight second batteries with eight inch guns, six primary batteries with nine inch guns. If that thing can get close enough to an enemy ship, it's going to blow it out of the water. And 19 knots makes it a very fast battleship. You know, normally 18 knots is the traditional speed for these ships. Pretty well armored as well. Hopefully the 19 knots allows it to close with the enemy ships and uh, get in close and use those secondary guns. My only concern is, again, 9-inch guns are smaller than most enemy battleships. However, because of the recent arms treaty, I'm hoping most of the Russian ships are newer and have 10-inch guns, which maybe are not as effective if they've got a negative one 10-inch gun like ours. Because our... The main reason I'm building the 9-inch guns is, again, because the 10-inch guns of ours are actually inferior to the 9-inch guns. I'm hoping that changes. I would like to build 10-inch guns, but we've got to correct that negative 1, and unfortunately there's no way to direct what you're, um, what you're researching. So basically we're researching naval guns, but we can't pick what we're researching. Anyway, um, the design of ships continues on, and uh, at this point uh, we are... Um, into 1906, January of 1906, and I would say we're getting real close to being ready for a war, even if we're still heavily outnumbered on the on the naval front. You can see our budget is uh, now smaller than Italy, unfortunately, but um, yeah, it is what it is, and we're continuing our march on to becoming a global power. Thank you for tuning in, guys, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.